Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. What I want to do in today's video is talk about measuring voltage drops in car circuits. Now, a lot of people get confused by this. They're not quite sure what they're measuring, and when they do measure it, they're not sure what it actually shows. So let's take a look at this subject. It's actually pretty straightforward once you get your head around it. So we're gonna start off with a basic car circuit. So we've got a 12 volt battery here, and we're gonna use 12 volts as our nominal voltage throughout this video, 12.0. One side of the battery is connected to the ground, connected to the car's bodywork or chassis. That's normally the negative side of the battery. The other side of the battery is connected to a load, usually through a switch or multiple switches, and that load might be fans or lights or the starter motor or whatever and then the other side of that load is connected to ground as well. Now remember, because they're both connected to ground, one side of the load and one side of the battery, we can mentally imagine that those are connected together. They're connected together by the car's bodywork. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, what about voltages? What voltages would we expect to see through different parts of this system? Let's start off by looking at the positive terminal of the battery. Would we expect to see 12 volts there? Yes, we would. It's a 12 volt battery. We would expect to see 12 volts at the output of that battery. Hmm, okay. What about at that point on the load, the battery side of the load? Would we expect to see 12 volts? Well, we would only see exactly 12 volts if that wire were a perfect conductor. Now, I hope you can start to see what I'm implying. Maybe it's not a perfect conductor, but we'll come back to that in a moment. What about on the ground side? Would we expect to see zero volts there? Yes, we would, because it's connected to the ground and the ground's connected to the other ground, which in turn is connected to the negative side of the battery. But what about there? Would we expect to see zero volts there? Again, only if this is a perfect conductor. Now, these conductors and no conductors are perfect, and the higher the amount of current that the load is taking, the less perfect, if you like, you're going to be able to see that conductor being. So let's put a multimeter on the circuit. Now, we connect one terminal of the multimeter to the 12 volt positive terminal of the battery. We connect the other terminal to the battery side of the load. Now, if this is not a perfect conductor, and as I say, no conductor is perfect, then we will be able to measure the voltage drop that's occurring on that conductor by simply looking at the meter. And don't worry about which way around you connect the meter. It might show a negative uh, value or it might show a positive value. In either case, it's the actual value of the voltage drop, and you're not gonna cause any damage by connecting the meter the wrong way around. And, and don't, don't worry about that part of it. So in this case, when the load is drawing current, when the headlights are on or when the fan is running or when the starter motor is turning, we have a measured voltage drop of 0.2 volts between the battery positive post and the input to the load. Is that a lot? No, not really. It does depend on how much current the load is drawing. If it were 0.2 volts for the starter motor, well, that would actually be fantastic. If it was 0.2 volts for the headlight, again, that would be very, very good. Now, what about the other side of the load? Well, again, we just connect the multimeter across those two points. Now, in this case, I've shown a higher value. I've shown 0.8 volts. I just made those values up, of course, but that might indicate, and it would indicate in this case, that there is a higher resistance in this wire. This wire is not as good as the battery feed. The earth wire to ground is not as good at carrying the current. Now, Obviously, the higher the voltage drops, the less volts that are actually getting to the load, and so effectively, the less the load will work well. So headlights will be dimmer, the starter motor will turn more slowly, and so on. There's a connection we haven't checked, especially with something like the starter motor, which is grounded typically to the engine block through its mounting bolts. We need to check how well the ground of the load is connected to the battery ground. So for example, if the earth strap, the grounding strap on the engine, which effectively connects the starter motor to the body is broken or frayed or not, not very good, the bolts are corroded, then we will measure another voltage drop. And that voltage drop is between the two grounds. So the ground of our load, I'm using here the example of the starter motor, 
and the ground of the battery, the negative terminal. And if you measure these voltage drops and they're all fine, they're quite low, then always measure between those two grounds and see if in fact there is a voltage drop across those. Now, if you have a good body connection at the load, so at the starter motor, going through that earth strap to the body, and you have a good ground connection for the battery, then you'll see a very low voltage drop through the body of the car. But often a bad earth, a bad ground, is where you start seeing really high values, especially with loads that are drawing a lot of current starter motor headlights and so on. Now, we've covered all of them that we can measure, but don't get confused, just measure them bit by bit, and the higher the value on the meter, the greater the voltage drop that is occurring, the higher the resistance that the leads are posing. Voltage drops, easy to measure, and once you realize it doesn't really matter which way you connect the meter around, uh, you can do it in just a few minutes and actually see on the meter how much voltage drop is occurring. The book's called Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. I go from the very basics of electrical systems of cars right through to stability control, ABS, and engine management. Thank you.